So this has got to be one of the most fun and unique custom dice out of the 12 dice in Golden Gears. And the thing is, it's also crazy powerful as well. The Data Inflation die is part of the Heterogeneity collection of dice and it's got a really unique passive and initial effect. At the start of every plane, this dice applies random beacons to all combat and elite domains and it also gives you one cheat. And then its passive gives you one reroll after you move to another domain, meaning that you're going to be overflowing on rerolls. And that's going to be a really good thing, especially when we look at the bonuses it applies to general buff die faces. So these faces are the blue die faces that start with the words general buff. And normally they take up your dice roll and last for about five turns on your next fight. However, when you run the data inflation die, these faces no longer have a turn duration and instead last for the entire fight. And they're also now stackable with each other. So. When you roll a general buff, its effect gets applied to you immediately, even if you don't accept the result. When you re-roll to another general buff, that effect also gets applied immediately. The buffs won't stack with themselves, so you can only get a single application of any one buff, but it will stack with each other for a total of 6 general buffs if you manage to re-roll all 6 faces. Because of this, the game really incentivizes you to run a custom die with 6 general buffs. This is made even stronger when you realize that you gain one stack of path boost for every buff that you have when you enter a battle, allowing you to get a maximum of six stacks of your path boost per combat, elite, or boss domain. So with that, let's take a look at our die faces. This one's going to be a little bit different than our other loadouts as it's really going to depend on what path you play and what characters you have. But there are some faces that are good across the board, so let's look at them first. So the first one, and by far the best one, is going to be Baseline. This face is so good that if it wasn't for the 5 turn duration, I would say that it's the best die face in the entire game for running Conundrum 12. Luckily for us, there is no duration here, so it's a definite must have for this playthrough. With this die face, your characters will no longer take more than 35% of their max health in a single attack. This effect, however, can only trigger once per turn. So this is like Fushuan on crack and almost eliminates one shot entirely. Yes, you can still die if there are multiple enemies chaining hits on you, but realistically, the biggest danger in Conundrum 12 runs are the Plane 2 and Plane 3 boss one-shot attacks. Things like Argenti's Hymn of Gorgeous Courage attack, the Swarm Onslaught, or the Ebon Deer's Gore attack. These are things that just immediately end your run. So, normally to deal with these attacks, we run blessings that give us revives, but with this face, it simply just caps the damage at 35%. Okay, so our next face is Rejuvenation, which gives us one skill back for every three that we spend. So this is just universally good. It's definitely going to be better on some builds than others, but I don't think anyone's going to be complaining about having more skill points to spend. Then we've got Initiative, which gives us 100% action advance every time a character uses their ultimate. This can only happen once every two turns, but it does last for the entire fight. So this gives your DPS more damage output and your support more SP generation. So it's just an overall win for us. And then finally, we've got Dexterity, which gives us a huge 40% speed boost to your entire team. So in a game mode where enemies and bosses can simply one shot you, having that extra speed to keep them locked down is really powerful. All right, then we've got some path specific faces. These are really powerful, but they're only useful if your path and character can make use of it. So it's going to be very obvious when and where you want to use these, so I'll just run through them really quickly. First, we've got Shield, which is designed for preservation, and it gives your team a stacking shield at the start of every turn. Fragility, which reduces enemies' effect and control resistance by 30%, so this would be optimal on Remembrance and Nihility runs. We've then got Detonation, which is ideal for Nihility runs. This causes basic attacks to instantly detonate dot effects, making them deal their full damage instantly. General buff preference can potentially be useful for abundance runs. This causes all healing to deal additional healing based on the healer's max health. And then we've got Vengeance, which is an elation or follow-up based face. This causes all follow-up attacks to ignore 100% of enemy defenses. And so after we slot in our universal faces, along with a couple of path specific faces, you might have one or two spare slots. So this is where some of the more niche faces can go in. These faces can potentially be really powerful, but some of them are a little playstyle dependent, so it really depends on how you play the game. So the first one is Investment. It makes all of your attacks do additional damage based on 25% of your attack for every 100 fragments that you currently have. So I've seen this do insane numbers when you run it with the 100 million fragment build, but realistically in a normal run, you probably won't get too much use out of this one. Then we've got Martyrdom, which is potentially pretty universal, and while it is my go-to for filling in that last slot, I do find that in actuality, it's not that impactful in real life situations. So against a Conundrum 12 plane 3 boss with about 10 stacks of disarray, it's actually pretty good. It usually deals about 400k damage each time. But against everything else, it's pretty negligible. I find that it deals about 150k bonus damage to the plane 2 boss, which really isn't that much at all. 
Then we have Lore, which deals 15% of an enemy's health for every knowledge domain on the current plane, up to a maximum of 60%. So this is actually meant to be used in an amber barrier run since the knowledge domains don't collapse there. I might actually do some testing on this as there might be some potential for some fun gimmick builds with this. This is however 100% useless for a data inflation run. And then finally we've got two faces that scale off of the amount of blessings that you have. So pattern which gives you 40% attack and then an additional 4% attack for every blessing that you own. And then secret box which gives us 30% max health and then an additional 3% max health for every blessing. So. That's the cool thing about this build. The buffs that you bring along are going to be up to you. I would just highly recommend that you bring baseline, but the rest is really flexible. And so that's it for the quick guide. As with my other videos in the series, I'm gonna share a Conundrum 12 run that I did while using the strategy that we just spoke about here with some running commentary on the decisions that I make during the run. So this time I'll be playing with an ice team under the Remembrance path consisting of Jing Liu, Pella, Ran Mei, and Hua Hua. Okay, so you just saw that we started off this run with two negative curios. I opted for the increased technique points and reduced blessing counts as I don't find that these two are too detrimental to our runs. The most important technique when running this team is Jing Liu since you want her in a bust state as soon as possible in order to front load that damage. So for this run the blessing priority is going to be your standard remembrance style playthrough in which we want to abuse the insane damage from disassociation as much as possible. So anything that applies disassociation or increases its damage is going to be top tier. We also want to pick up anything that helps with freeze application in order to both reduce incoming damage and also maximize outgoing damage. So during this run, each time we enter a combat, elite or boss domain, we're going to get at least one stack of path boost to ramp up our effective hit rate. So early on, we don't need to reroll buffs since everything is still weak. But as we continue to move through the plane, we're going to start building up our rerolls. So we want to make sure that we do use some of these rerolls to build our hit rate faster. There's really no reason to save up too many rerolls since you can only get a maximum of six stacks of bonus per fight. So if you end up with 30 rerolls before the final boss, but only need 10, then that's a whole heap of wasted stacks that you could have gotten throughout your run. So you can see here at this point in the plane, I've got two cheats and eight rerolls already. So I toss out one or two rerolls to stack some buffs. So one thing to make note of here is that when you do this, make sure that you're actually about to step into a fight since you don't actually get anything unless you fight with the buffs active. And then in terms of how much hit you want to be going for for the first boss, I find that anywhere between 120 to 150 is pretty reliable and you definitely want to eventually work your way to 300 and above by the end of plane 2. Okay, so we're just about to step into the plane 1 boss, so this is where you want to start rolling your dice to stack some buffs. I try to make sure that I land the baseline face at least once for the one shot protection and as many other faces as I can. So you can easily check which buff you've got active by clicking on cheat as it's going to have this little thing in the top right corner on each active buff that says in effect. So if you can't get all 6 buffs that's fine. There's really no point in wasting all your rerolls at this point trying to get all 6. But if you absolutely need to hit a particular face then just use a cheat to get it since we're about to get ourselves another cheat in plane 2 anyway. And so with the first boss down I pick up my first disassociation buff. I also managed to roll 5 buffs before that fight which gave me an additional 120% hit rate taking me to 264. And so now that we're in plane 2 we once again need to pick up a negative courier. I go with the transaction cost as I'm not planning on hitting many transaction domains this run and I'd rather not mess with my skill points. So now I'm just going to skip through the next few moves to save you guys some time as nothing really eventful happened. Each move is going to give us more rerolls, and I did manage to hit an intracognition domain along the way to pick up another 3 rerolls. So now we're sitting on about 15 rerolls and 2 cheats by the time we get up to our first combat of plane 2. So with 4 combats lined up ahead, I plan to do about 2 rerolls before each fight, which lets us build 3 stacks of bonus each time. Since we're going to be gaining rerolls along the way, this should still leave me with a healthy amount of rerolls by the time we hit the plane 2 boss, ensuring that we can then stack enough bonuses to beat it. One thing that I kind of glossed over before was that the data inflation dice also applies random beacons to every single combat and elite domain on the field. So you can see how nice this effect is for our run since almost everything is already enhanced. So this really takes the pressure off of us in terms of saving up fragments for upgrades since you're going to find that most of your stuff will already be maxed by the end of the run. Alright, so as we approach the plane 2 boss, we're now going to be sitting on 2 cheats and 9 rerolls. So we also have 29 stacks of bonus built up for a whopping 696 effective hit rate, which is going to be really handy for the upcoming fight. Luckily for us, with the options for the boss, we're given a choice of the Ebon Deer and Kekolia. So we're definitely going with the Ebon Deer here as Kekolia is an absolute nightmare for remembrance runs. So I'll let the boss battle play out if you guys want to watch. The aim of the fight here is just to constantly keep everything locked down while we make use of disassociation to deal damage. 
thanks to our buffs we've got plenty of skill points to go around so we're able to spam Pawpaw's heals to preemptively remove any debuffs that land on us and to keep the party topped up. Alright, plane 3, home stretch, and once again we need to pick up a negative curio. So, the obvious one here for this run is the Cognita Invalidator, as I've got the Eurydition Blessing that gives me full energy at the start of a fight. So this curio actually activates before the Blessing activates, so it gets cancelled out and as such does nothing. So if you've been spending your cheats properly, you should have enough saved up to get yourself your 6 buffs before the boss. If you find that you've got too many rerolls saved up, then you can walk over to the Elite Domain to spend some of it. So nothing much to say here in Plane 3 that I haven't already covered in the last two planes, so we do end the run with a total of 23 Blessings, which isn't a huge amount, but they are all upgraded. So for our Plane 3 boss, I can pick between the Grizzly and Argenti, so I decided to go with Argenti this time, since more people find him harder. Both of them do have Ice Weaknesses, so I could have really gone either way here. And so that's it for the running commentary. The boss fight strategy itself remains exactly the same as what we did for our Plane 2 boss fight, so I'll leave it here for you guys if you want to watch, and I'll have the character loadouts at the end of the video if you want to check out what my teams are like. This run was really fun, and it's got to be one of my favourite dice to play, but let me know how you find it.